The way Navarro CS is definitely different from a lot of the smaller lanes throughout like the summer or anything like that. It's something that's more so like a proving ground where you want to prove people wrong, show them you can beat opponents who are expected to beat you. On any given day, any team can win this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for G2 Esports! I think the chemistry with the team has definitely improved since our first uh, few lands. I would say that ever since the beginning of this season, I've been very confident in the team. Us as a team, I've been working on playing like consistently, playing good consistently, and that just came from more practice. Like we boot camp before this, so it helped a lot for this tournament. Maybe individually, someone may not perform, but our team as a cohesive unit is getting stronger and stronger. I think for G2 situation, like they have, they have a world champion in Kronovi, they have Rizzo who's been to land a few times as well, but then they have the crazy man, Jay Naps himself, a rookie this season. Knowing we have an organization that has our back through everything is a good feeling. These guys are winning literally everything that happens in the OCE region. So can they take it to the fan favorites of North America, G2? Get up and get loud. It's game day here for the World Championships of Season 4. So with the pass to JNAPS. Looking to make a play early on. Puts it over the top of Torsas and G2. Inaugural game of season four. Jake's gonna secure it here with another goal. 3-1 Chiefs. Trippe unfazed, gets the clear, and now a shot on net. Puts it through. Chiefs up two of. Jake's following along. He's got Rizzo in the midfield to work with. Looks for the pass from the top of one. He'll look for the redirect over the two. Beautiful play from G2 as the Jake cut. Jake now up on net. Naps in, puts it through, and G2's got the Shut down by J Naps. G2's defense finally shows up, holds on, and they get the three goal comeback. Corsas can clear outwards, but Jay Naps down and under. Drippe got zoned out hard by Rizzo, who gets the assist here. Drippe out to Jake. The shot is sucked down by Rizzo. Grenovi to push it across that midfield line, and he'll keep that ball on the ground. G2 sends us to game five. A display from Chiefs there at the very end, but a little too late. Taking turns winning the games, but we got to stop at some point, and it's going to stop here in game five. Jay Naps scoring first in the first nine seconds left. G2, another bump from Grenovi. I feel like throughout our series with Chiefs, uh, both teams kept their composure until game five, and I think Chiefs kind of fell over the edge a bit, and it gave us the advantage to, you know, take over and just take the series. G2 came to play and they're bringing their A game, and then OCE is here to compete as well. Going to game five was maybe not quite expected. We were hoping for a 3-1 to be a little more comfortable, but they came out pretty strong, but we held it down in game five. They crumbled under the pressure and we didn't, so we were pretty happy about that. So did Rizzo. Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> the fan favorite, <laughs> You can see him amping up the crowd. The crowd always seems to go crazy for us. I'm not too sure why, but definitely appreciative to have that much support from the fans. I think the difference in fan engagement between other teams and our team is just that me as a player, I've been around for so long. I was one of the few streamers, and so I got a lot of popularity off of that. Rizzo also has a lot of content creation. He's an epic memer, you know? People are really attached to that and very fond of that. And of course, JNAPS is just a monster player. People love to follow who's the best, who's the best, and Jane Apps is always in discussion for that. To be so young and have all these fans in a, a professional gaming career is honestly like, it's a dream come true. I have to use this as an advantage and keep going. Without the fans, I don't think the team, you know, maybe on a bad day, we wouldn't have those pick-me-ups that other teams would get if we had no fans. I think RLCS is definitely the biggest Rocket League event, so seeing that many fans was kind of overwhelming, and it was definitely the most we've ever seen. Rocket League, in comparison to some of the other team-worn esports that are out right now, is hitting numbers that those games, when they were younger, weren't hitting. I think it's going to become a team-worn esport before five years even. Very, very, very short amount of time. Well, the first tournament that I went to, I was recognized, but only by like three people or so. Seeing the development within like a year span is kind of insane. Scrims have been going pretty well. We're working on just playing at a fast pace and also keeping ball possession. And we're working on getting the ball from defense to offense without losing it and trying to get as many score attempts as possible. We really just need to focus on our rotations and our comms and some boost control, some fundamentals really, and I think we'll be fine. And my family supports me like 100%. 
on my journey as a Rocket League player. Like ever since I started making like $10 or $15 from tournaments. They're incredibly supportive, even if they're not actually at the event. And seeing them here definitely, it makes me feel great knowing that I have them by my side and supporting me. For this tournament, I was hoping to accomplish just a big upset. You know, beating EU is quite the accomplishment. It always feels great. We did it uh, to flip side at DreamHack, and I was hoping to do it again this tournament. To prepare ourselves to play against PSG, we're just trying to keep a level head, you know, get good practice in in the morning, and keep our composure, and I think we'll do great. Well, you heard a roar from the crowd. PSG Esports against G2 Esports, game number one. Let's do it that he has toppled. There's going to be a shot. There is the demo. There is the goal. G2 retake the lead. Rizzo tries to get the clip, but it is PSG with all the pressure. Here's Tamara. Open goal, and he will turn it in. When we were playing against PSG, after the first game loss, it didn't feel like we really lost that game. It just kind of felt like a few defensive mistakes caused us to have that loss, but I, I was really confident in bouncing back in that series. Jump straight down, but now Rizzo on the other end of the pitch. Oh, oh Rizzo! hit it straight into the goal. What a shot here from Rizzo G2, up. yet again, will take the opening goal now. They need to see what they can do with it. j Naps wants to try and make it too. Oh! And Bluey will turn it into his own net. This is so unfortunate here for Bluey. He tries to get the challenge off of the back. PSG plays very fast. They're very creative, they're very loose. So we really need to be on our toes and really smother them. Just shut them down, shut down every pass, try to win as many 50-50s as we can, but also keeping our rotation in mind. Now two players committed yet again. PSG, they've got to sort this out. They've overcommitted. Jen going to turn that in. PSG are their own worst enemies right now. Oh, we saw G2 suffocating PSG. How long has it been since we saw two North American teams make Top four. That's be very dangerous indeed. Shot set actually takes the ball away from Farah. Follow up shot. Oh, it is! Is safe, but he's not there in time. Rizzo will give G2 the first goal. One player at a time committed from PSG. That's going to start rolling all the way in. And an impossible task has been made even more difficult. We've got Farah to aim for. Farah plays it straight down. Bluey, though, arrives too early. It's going to go to the other end of the pitch. And that will all but confirm it. But they stepped up this season. And they will take out PSG. And they're going to move on to the top four in the RLCS World Championships. Wow, and you can just hear the crowd erupt as G2 moving on. G, I really feel like the team was the most on point it's been in a long time. So we were kind of worried going into the PSG game. And all of our wins have gone to game five. But this is a 3-1 for us. So we're really proud of it. Cloud9 versus G2. Winner stays alive and makes top three. A match with Cloud9, we're very close. I think any team could have taken it. I think we put up a good fight. We had a lot of close calls, making saves in zero seconds, five minute overtime. I think we could have edged it out, having made a couple better defensive touches, but in the end, we didn't take it. Grenovi will do it, seal the deal. Cloud9 stays alive. Regardless, I'm happy that we made top four and being top two in North America. I think it's a huge statement for us and I look forward to more tournaments with the team. Rocket League to me is at this point kind of an addiction. I kind of can't stay away from it. It's uh, incredibly fun. I have great teammates to you know, support me to play with anytime. The community is one of the best out of any games I've seen. This one is just has so much more support than others. This game wouldn't be where it is without them, without the people watching, without people going to events and cheering. All these signs, all the love, all the support is what keeps me going and is what gets me out of bed in the morning. After this event, my mindset for competitive Rocket League is to never stop. Losing always makes me feel more competitive and I just want to come back even stronger next time. This is the 10 seconds of the video where I'll be convincing you to press the button. So, subscribe, press the button.